All right, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Brady and I'm joined by Ryan Kilpatrick. Ryan is a governmental sales specialist for all things traffic safety equipment from StreetSmart. Today we're gonna obviously talk about trailer and truck attenuators. So protecting your crews when you're out working alongside the roadway or the highway. Uh, StreetSmart has been a distributor of these traffic devices for going on about 20 years. It's one of our most long-standing uh, partnerships we have with our manufacturers. So we go out and find really world-class products and put them into our rental fleet and rent those out to traffic safety professionals around the nation. We also sell everything we rent as well. So we're gonna take a deep dive into these devices today. A uh, number of you submitted questions ahead of time, so I wanna thank each of you that took the time to do that. Um, so whether you've used these for a number of years or you've never used them, hopefully you'll be able to leave today's session with a firm understanding and a good overview of, of what these attenuators are, uh, how they work, and the most common applications they're being used in. Let's just dive right in. Uh, the trailer unit or the towable device, they like to call it. Tell us about what's required to pull this trailer um, and maybe the types of applications where you see it being used. Sure thing. These trailers are all towed by a host vehicle of 12,000 pounds or heavier. Okay. Um, so that's gonna be your stake trucks or your plow trucks, uh, things like that. We've even put them on just flatbed trucks, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen them in a variety of applications. Uh, cities, counties, DOTs love to use these, but we've also seen them in um, some different aspects where you didn't necessarily to see them. Mm -hmm. Tree trimming services, uh, firefighting services, uh, any other kind of emergency services that are out there that are going to be blocking a lane um, of traffic that they need to have an, uh, provide an extra part of security for their people working out there. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now what type of, is there a special hitch and how am I getting power to either the aero board or the message board? Yep. So all of these trailers come with a standard three inch pintle hitch uh, that will attach to your truck. They will run on a seven pin round power supply that you can plug into the back of your truck. Um, some trucks do have a seven pin flat, okay. which if that is the case, we can certainly swap out that plug and make sure that it's ready to go for you, whether sure. it's a rental or a purchase. Uh, something that's easily uh, fixed and, and it's hooked up to your truck right. that way. Okay. So again, we have two units obviously behind us. One is with the standard aero board. Everybody knows how those things work. But mm -hmm. Ryan, maybe talk a little bit about this message board and I'll, I'll give you this controller and you can talk about um, how it gets controlled and maybe how Street Smart worked with some of the manufacturers and what we can do with that board sitting in the cab of your truck. Absolutely. So uh, as Brady showed you, it comes with an in-cab handheld controller. Um, so we can power up this message board and run it as we typically would, like any other kind of standard application with a trailer mounted message board. Mm -hmm. So if we want to run a two page message or chevrons, arrows, etc., we are certainly more than capable of doing that with this smart board. Uh, the other nice thing is that this board can connect to Waze or 511. So with this information can be easily displayed to the motoring public out there. Nice. Yeah, I know yep. that's a hot topic. So. Uh, if I'm using Waze or one of those navigation apps, you're telling me that this can be outfit so that it's going to tell the motorist maybe a mile or two ahead of time, road work ahead, use caution. I can see it where it's at in the project okay. uh, as far as the location. If anything's uh, blinking on it, we can yep. have those lights kind of reflect in that as well too as well. Okay. Yep. And to push that information to the cloud, is the host vehicle driver having to do anything differently? No, he's not. Simply power up the machine and okay. that'll start running right away. That's awesome. Yep. No additional switch to flip exactly <laughs> awesome okay uh looking at some of the other questions um you know how, what are some of the other you know reasons why would i use the trailer versus that truck over there um you mentioned some of the kind of industries that are using it um what, what are some of the other main driving factors of, of a trailer versus the truck yeah great question uh the main reason why is maneuverability okay um just being able to you know back the trailer around things like that yep. the other nice thing is that you're not dedicating a host vehicle to uh to a tma uh such as the one down there sure um that frees up drivers trucks etc to go do other projects yep. or anything like that so that yep. way it's not always dedicated to one all right let's talk about kind of hooking it up and what's involved with that. How easy are these to maneuver and, and get going on the roadway, Ryan? They're extremely easy to hook up. Uh, if you've hooked up a message board or any other standard trailer in the okay. past, you can certainly do that. Yep. Uh, it's just cranking the jack down so it places it onto the pintle hitch, yep. uh, hooking up your jacks, 
uh, excuse me, your hooks, and then uh, making sure your caster wheel's lifted up off the ground because you don't want to have that dragging across the ground or anything like Perfect. that. Perfect. The other nice thing is that the touchscreen is extremely user-friendly. Oh. If anybody's used a Vermac message board in the past, it's going to be the exact same um, functionality as you've used on any other touchscreen. Okay. And the aero board one is just as easy. Yep, exactly. Okay. Turn it on and yep. push a chevron or aero direction and you're ready to roll. Okay. The question everybody wants to always know is how the heck do these things work and what's inside of them? <laughs> That's a good, it's a great question as well. Uh, these, if you were to cut these right in half, you would see that it's shaped just like a honeycomb inside. Okay. It's an aluminum uh, honeycomb shape. So they're designed to, upon impact, crush upon each other, uh, taking away that inertia. So sure. that way the host truck will barely feel that impact once okay. it is taking place. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned one of the defining characteristics of the Traffic uh, Scorpion brand is they can be repaired. Yes, sir. So somebody you know, might throw the BS flag on that. You know, if this has been hit, how can you repair it? Talk through that a little bit. How does Street Smart repair some of these in our rental fleet if needed? or um, repair them for the customers you've sold them to. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Street Smart is a certified traffic's repair uh, facility. Okay. So in talking to that, mm -hmm. um, each one of these cushions is replaceable. Um, we've all backed one into uh, another vehicle or as somebody else might've just bumped into it. Uh -huh. um, if one of these cushions uh, is impacted, you can replace each one individually. So as part of the repair process, uh, we make sure we take the correct measurements so that way we are meeting factory standards uh, specs when nice. we repair these. Yep. Okay. Talk about, you know, these things have to be crash tested and meet a federal standard. What speed are they crash tested at? And maybe share a personal story, if you would, of one of these things doing its job out on the roadway. Absolutely. So Traffix offers two different options. Yep. Uh, the one we have here is the TL3. That's the larger crash cushion okay. that's actually tested for 62 miles an hour. Okay. Then there is also, we don't have one at the moment, but it's a TL2, uh, which is a little bit shorter. It's yep. about 13 feet compared to about the, the 18 feet of these. Um, that's crash tested for 52 miles an hour. Okay. Now you're gonna see the smaller uh, units in more of a urban area, cities, yep. things like that, just because it allows for more maneuverability. There's okay. not as much room to maybe back it around, things like sure. that. Um, whereas your high speed crash attenuators, that's going to be on basically any high speed yep. um, road that you yep. have out there. And, and from what I understand, from a federal MASH testing standard, that 62 miles an hour is, is kind of the upper limit. There isn't like another class that they could meet. Nope, it's that is, that's what they kind of crash tested at. at. Nice. Now, okay. to your point about um, a personal experience, yeah. uh, MnDOT earlier this year had yep. one of these TL3, so the larger ones crashed into down on I-90 mm -hmm. and um, both by semi-truck, okay. uh, both semi-truck driver and the Minnesota DOT's driver yep. walked away from the crash. Okay. Um, now the semi-truck driver is, you know, gonna have to, work through a couple of things of course yeah. but he is able to live yeah. and still work and provide for his family as well too yeah i gotta tell you you know i've been with street smart about five years ryan a little bit longer and i've taken a couple of those phone calls from our customers saying hey we were out doing work last night drunk driver hit one of our guys everybody lived even the drunk driver i even remember a story where the drunk driver hit his face on the steering wheel teeth were falling out he gets out of the vehicle everything's completely destroyed um, but just pretty humbling to take that phone call and to know that really this piece of iron and aluminum saved that person's life and, you know, yeah. could have been so much worse. Absolutely. Allows them to go home to their family. Yeah. 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 So, and you, you know, you go to any trade show or DOT meeting, it seems like everybody has that, you know, either tragic story where someone did get struck or the near miss, exactly. right? And with distracted driving, not going away anytime soon, um, that's the nice piece about these is they're the last line of defense a lot of times they are. for these crews. So um, maybe talk about that, Ryan, is how many of these do I need if I'm protecting my crew out on the roadway? Absolutely. What does that look like? So that's just, uh, there is no federal guideline that states that you must have so many TMAs in any kind of operation. Okay. Now, it is going to be more kind of local, so yep. you want to check in with your uh, state DOT or your county DOTs, things like that, sure. to make sure that you are hitting the recommendation. Yep. Here in Minnesota, yep. uh, MnDOT is requiring that you have three um, truck, or excuse me, TL3 
um, trailer attenuators in any kind of moving operation. Okay. Yep. So any kind of striping or anything like that, yep. you're always going to see three of these crash attenuators yep. in place. Yep. I know a number of these, you mentioned Minnesota DOT just came back off a season long rental. That's um, right. You want to touch on how MnDOT uses those, what is it, eight months out of the year, seven yeah. months? <laughs> so here uh, locally, yeah. MnDOT will rent some of our truck mounted attenuators. Yep. Uh, they like to use them in their um, striping crews. Okay. So they'll load them up with paint and bead, and then you'll see these trucks out as any as they're doing their striping along the entire state. Sure. So okay. they'll go up north, they'll do everything up north and oh, work their down. way down kind of through yep. the south and, and come back around through the metro. Awesome. So yeah. that highlights some of the flexibility of our rental program. Obviously, Minnesota, every DOT own own these devices and have trucks dedicated to them. But um, you know, on those shorter term projects, maybe it's a month or two or seven, um, mm -hmm. that's where the, the rental piece can be a, an economical solution. So um, let's see, what else? Let's um, you know, talk about the message board and the aero board. Um, I'll maybe go crank them down and talk about, Ryan, um, how fast can I tow these things when I'm going down the roadway? So you can certainly tow these at highway speed. I always recommend that you lower either your aero board or your uh, message board, whatever your trailer is outfitted for, simply because uh, that puts a lot of stress on the uprights. So you just don't want to have anything rattle loose or anything like that for you. Um, but these are able to tow at highway speeds. Um, they're very simple to crank up. It's just a hand crank, as you see. Brady's doing it right now. It took him less than 30 seconds to do both of these. Um, but it's always better to, to crank them up and down between each time you move them versus running wild at 65 miles an hour with this thing up in the air. Not that anyone's ever done that. Never, I've never <laughs> once seen that ever. Um, wanted to just show this. This is the aero board controller for that unit. Um, obviously this goes in the cab of the host vehicle. So. Uh, let's see, what haven't we touched on um, in terms of the trailer? I think we're good. Let's take a look now at the TMA truck. Let's head on over there. Okay, Ryan, here we are over by the TMA, the truck mounted attenuator. We've hit on a few of the characteristics of it already, but um, why do people rent these from StreetSmart? Uh, simply put, the ease of it. Uh, a lot of fleets don't necessarily have uh, a dedicated TMA truck that they can just always put on with a TMA. Yep. So they'll come to us, yep. they already have a truck that's ready to go. All of our trucks are clean, yep. ready to run. Uh, we take great pride in all of these Kenworths. Um, so that way they, it's just, a, it's really simple for you. Okay, yep. and available to rent nationwide. Nationwide, yep. Okay, awesome. Um, now obviously, uh, you being the governmental specialist, you sell a lot of these units as well. So we just sell the tail, if you will, just the, the yellow piece you hear uh, behind me. Ryan, how long does it take for a customer to install one of these on their truck and what does that look like? So yeah, so install, it goes really quick. Um, if you're not looking to have a dedicated TMA truck, there is an option called a fast track. Um, this allows uh, for the TMA to be quickly connected and disconnected within minutes. Okay. It's four bolts. Uh, two on each side, you drop your jacks and you're allowed to slide this away. Right. So as far as install, uh, it is a fairly quick install yep. once you actually get it uh, attached and everything right. like that. Okay. Yep. Um, so obviously this folds up and over as I was setting all this up today, I timed it. How long does it take for the tail to come down? So uh, I believe it took 16 seconds for it to come down. Gravity is my friend uh, on the way down. A little bit longer on the way up, so 26 seconds uh, to get that thing back up and over. Uh, the reason they call it the Scorpion is um, as you can see, once it's folded up and over, it kind of has the same characteristic of that scorpion's tail. Um, so again, 16 seconds to deploy. Um, you're doing all that from the cab of the truck. Um, who can drive these things? CDL requirements, what are we talking? Weight limits, anything like yep. that? So the uh, nice thing is, is that you do not have to have a CDL to drive one of these vehicles. Okay. You do need to have a DOT physical card, sure. but you do not need to have a, a CDL or anything like that because okay. all of these trucks fall under that 26,000 pounds. Okay. okay? Um, here in Minnesota, uh, as I stated, MnDOT likes to use these trucks for their painting crews. Yep. So we keep these right around 16,000 pounds so they can add about 8,000 pounds worth of paint and bead. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, other states such as Texas require a little bit heavier host vehicle. Yep. They require about a 19,000 pound vehicle. So our trucks down there come with that weight already built into the truck sure. as well too. Okay. Um, so that is something that you just have to keep in mind is that you want to ask, you know, what your local requirements yep. are. Nice. Yep. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we kind of hit on it before, but typical use case on a, on a truck, Ryan, who's using these things, 
how many do I need? Yeah, uh, similar to a trailer attenuator, there yeah. is no requirement as that I need to have two or three or anything like that. Okay. Um, the nice thing about this though is anybody can use these. So from your mom and pop facilities yeah. to your um, emergency vehicles, things like that, right. anybody that has a DOT card could technically get in and start driving this thing. Okay. So yeah. they can. I know we even recently had a towing company that uh, bought yep. one of these units. Towing, so. striping companies, yep. uh, sweeping corpse, things like okay. that. Okay. Uh, yep, we're starting to see a lot of a lot of buzz around the yep. beehive. From but as you mentioned, when we were back by the trailers, check in with your local kind of regulations. Each state has a little bit different guidelines yep, in terms absolutely. of the number you would need specific to each project. Great. Okay. Anything else uh, on the TMA that anybody should know? <laughs> um, Kind of as we talked about with the aeroboard, it'll run standard just like your normal aeroboard. Yeah. All of our trucks are outfitted with 25 light aeroboards. So you can run um, arrows, chevrons, etc., yep. four corners, whatever you need to do uh, to alert your traffic to um, any kind of work being done in the area. Uh, one other application that we've seen with these trucks is that we've had customers put on a static sign. Um, such as painting crew ahead or right lane closed and having an arrow pointing that way right. just to have an added visual besides the message board or arrow board right. and the LEDs. Okay. Themselves. And to your point on the LEDs, obviously there's a lot of nighttime work. So once all the lights are on, uh, pretty hard to miss these uh, trucks. Although I continue to be surprised at the number of people that crash into these things. It is. It's <laughs> a, right. a moth to a flame. Let's head back over to the trailers. Let's wrap this thing up before we get soaked. Okay, so the last piece I want to hit on, Ryan, you mentioned um, these are the TL3, and that's kind of like the model number, right? Yes. Um, the TL2, so it's a little bit shorter. Um, Traffics came out with this two years ago, maybe. Uh, the, the, they call it the Metro. Yes. So talk about that real quick. Who's buying those things, and how are they different than the devices we just talked about? Certainly. Um, as the name kind of alludes to, the Metro, yeah. uh, these are designed for more of an urban environment, so a city, um, roads that have a little bit slower uh, miles per hour, so maybe a 45 miles an hour or less kind of a road. Yeah. Um, just the, the maneuverability. Uh, in their bigger cities, you're not able to necessarily back in a big trailer or even a, a TMA as far as a TL3 like this. Right. So Scorpion came out with the TL2 that yeah. just allows you to have a little bit more maneuverability throughout the, the bigger cities. Okay, and you mentioned the weight requirement for that is about 7,500? 7,500, okay. correct. Yep. So an F-550. Exactly, yep, so again, speaker. yeah, great, a snake truck, okay. you know, something along the lines of that, yep. uh, cone truck or something, yep. you know, we'll have, usually hit those weight Right. And one of the features um, of that is it, it just folds straight up. It right? does, it's just a single 90 degree pivot yep. instead of the, the TL3, which cantilevers up and over like okay. you alluded to earlier yeah. as far as the scorpion tail, this is just a 90 degree fold up. Awesome. Yep. So you're kind of preserving that bed space. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, well, like I mentioned, we're about to get poured on here. So let's wrap this thing up. If you have any questions that we missed, um, put them in the chat down below. We can talk about those for the next few minutes and we can do that inside where we can stay dry. Or if you have questions, uh, once we're done here today, uh, streetsmartrental.com, nationwide rental and sales of these devices. Uh, we'd love to get some of these out for your crews and again, uh, act as that last line of defense against those distracted drivers. Ryan, it's been a pleasure. Thank, uh, you, sir. thank you for everything you shared with us and take it easy, everyone.